Now that we've learned about the other collection types, it's good to integrate them into our drawing program. The simplest way in which we can integrate them is inside of our draw transform. We currently have a var list that stores all of our drawables in transform. We can actually change this to be a val of a buffer. So mutable dot buffer and I would add the import import collection dot mutable and then this line here will change from being setting it equal to the appending of a value to just using the plus equals and adding it on. Now quite honestly a val of a mutable value is not necessarily better than a var for an immutable one. In fact in many cases it's it's worse because I in fact technically this statement right here after I've made this change I really shouldn't do because now I'm letting other code get direct access to the children and so I would need to make a copy of this. One way to make a copy of this is to just map it, map all elements to themselves and so I'm making a new buffer. Um, yeah, there's overhead in there so if this children is called very often we're going to wind up creating a lot of duplicates. And it's almost interesting to see if we ever use children instead of underscore children inside of inside of here. It nope, oh, actually there we do. We definitely want to change that to underscore children if we're making this change. That's a fairly simple change. A more interesting change would be to actually use a map and make it so our command interface works. So let's go ahead and let's run this program again. So remember that we have this area down here where we can type stuff in and uh, it's supposed to be taking in commands. And what I'd like to start off by doing is adding the ability to do three different commands. Uh, I should note that I took the stuff we had in the drawing from GUIs and graphics and I just copied it over here and then changed all the package statements. I'm going to create a new, how about a new object called commands and as the name implies it's going to be responsible for the user for handling of processing of commands and it kind of has a simple interface I want it so that the we pass in the string that the user typed and because we might want to use it it would be nice if we also got the drawing that this command was associated with. So if any changes are made it will uh, be able to to reflect those changes. And it's going to return any. And that any will basically be added to that text area and printed out. Okay. And I want to add three commands here. Three commands that I'm going to add are echo, add, and refresh. Okay, so what do each of these do? Well, echo and add are actually fairly similar. Actually, all, all of these are, are very simple. When they call refresh, it should redraw the drawing. Okay, for one of a reason, don't know. Maybe maybe in the future we'll have reasons why we want to do that. Echo should just take whatever follows echo and print it out to the output area, and add should take a bunch of numbers and then give us the sum of those numbers. Now, obviously we're doing this in the section that has other uh, collection types and I mentioned that we're going to use a map here. So inside of here I'm going to add a new map that will be called commands. And this is a map that takes a string. The string is going to be the name of the command. And part of the reason I'm doing it this way is I want to be able to easily add more commands and have our apply method just kind of work. And each string maps to a combination of, well, to a function which takes a string and a drawing and gives back an any. Okay. Note that we have a string and a drawing, and it gives back an any. So in many ways, it's very similar to this apply here. And we'll put some an open and a close parentheses. 
Okay, we have an add, which should go to something. We have an echo, which should go to something. And we have a refresh, which should go to something. Now, of course, all of those somethings, and each one of these will have a comma to separate it from, actually not the last one. Each one of these somethings is a function. So the first thing that we pass in this string is actually not the entire input because the apply method is going to pull off, for example, echo, add, or refresh. It's gonna pull off the first word and it's going to pass in all the rest of it, which will be the arguments. So I'm going to call this rest. I could, or, or how about we call it args and the drawing and then it needs to do whatever the right thing is so in this case args you know they might type in add of three four five in which case i should break these things apart and process them okay so i'm going to take the args i want to trim them just because i feel safer when uh when i get rid of the leading and trailing spaces and then i'm going to Split those arguments on spaces, and I use the plus here. We'll talk more about regular expressions, but this way, if they put three space space four space space five, it'll behave well. And I want to take each of those and map it to an integer, and then sum them all up. And that's our implementation of add. Echo is actually in some ways even easier. I'm going to take the arguments and the drawing and I'm going to give back a trimmed value of the arguments because that's the way we're setting this up. Whatever comes back is just what gets printed. And the refresh isn't really going to print out anything. What it's supposed to do is it's supposed to tell the drawing to draw itself. And we so we have a draw method in there. And now all of that's happy, all we have to do is make the apply method call these. So first we have to take this input and we have to break it into two pieces. The stuff before the command and the stuff after it. And so I'm actually going to find the index of where the space is. So we'll take the input and we will get the index of the first space in here and then I'm going to split at that location and split at returns a tuple so I'm going to split this into the command and the args and that is input dot split at space index okay now this would be happy as long as there is a space what happens if there's not a space? Well, there's not a space, index of returns negative one, and split out is not going to like that. So we need an if here. If space index is less than zero, then all I'm going to return is the tuple of the input and an empty string. Else, I'm going to call split and I give back the tuple of the things before the space index and the things after the space index. So at this point, I have uh, two possibilities, or I have, I have basically my two pieces here. Um, now I want to use this and I need to look up this command inside of it. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, one thing, what if they typed in something that's not a valid command? If they type in something that's not echo, add, or refresh. So we need to make sure it's there first. So if the commands dot contains our key, which is actually going to be command dot to lowercase, if it contains it, I want to do one thing, else I'm just going to give back the string not a valid command okay 
if it does contain it, then I, I believe I need a parenthesis here, then I need to execute that command and give back the result of it. And I can do that. So I have commands. That's this map up here. It is a map with a string key. So I'm going to pass it the lowercase version of that string key. And that gives me back one of these. Well, this is a function. And so in order to apply this function, I'm going to trim the arguments and I'm going to pass drawing because that's the second thing that it takes. Okay. So you might want to take some time to look at that. This is actually kind of dense code here, but we're using our map. We're checking to see if the key exists inside of the map, if it's the right command. If not, we tell them. If it is, we look it up inside of the map. That gives us back a function. We pass the function two arguments. That gives us back an any, and that should be added into here. So where does this go into here? We've written commands. The last thing we need to do is we need to make them process. So when we build this drawing tab, we have our command field in our command area. And how about we put in a section here to handle commands. So I'm going to make it so this happens for the on action of the command field. So basically they type something in, they hit enter. Um, that's the only time that this is going to execute. So we'll have an action event out of space rocket. Okay, what do we want to do here? Well, we need to kind of append onto the command area. So the text is equal to actually does it's just a string property. Append text. Wonderful. Okay. So what text do we want to apply? This winds up being a string. It should be the result of executing that command, which we'll use our commands object. And we pass it two things. One should be the text that's in the field. So command field dot text. And I'll use the parentheses to get the value for it. And the other should be the drawing, which in here is named drawing. Okay. And let's look at this type mismatch found any required string. So we're going to have to explicitly convert it to a string so that the append text will be happy with it. Turns out one other thing that I want to do once that is once I pass that in there I actually need to clear out the commands fields text. Because we just hit enter, we made stuff happen. I don't want the text to stay there. Let's run this, let's see if it works. See how close we are to a proper. Okay, echo, hi, prints out hi, add, three, four, five, <laughs> 12, hmm. Probably a line feed would be a good thing to do. Refresh, well, we don't have, actually, you, in this case, we didn't have a drawing, but at least it turned it all white. Uh, and that one returned unit because that's what draw gives us back. Okay, so that actually kind of seems to be working. Uh, some things we could do to improve it might be to add a new line there, uh, possibly take this text and add it at the beginning with the new line. Turns out if we do that, we no longer need to call to string because the appending of strings will automatically do that for us. That way we'll get a command. And how about we put something that just looks like a prompt at the beginning? Let's see if that looks a little bit better. We're, we should be close here. Echo high. Add three, four, five. Refresh. Add one, two, three, four, five. 
and you'll note that once we get to that point, we get our scroll bar in here. So it looks pretty good. We've used a, a map. It's now very easy to add new commands. All we have to do is put a comma, add the new command name, and then the function that should happen. So it's going to be very easy to extend this in the future, and that's a big plus for us. And it's a fairly nice demonstration of how we can use the map data type in order to simplify some of the, the code that we would want for command processing.